Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Ben. Today I'm going to talk to you about Phaser JS. Here is the logo for Phaser, and that's the Phaser sprite as you can see up there. Uh, before I talk to you about Phaser, I want to talk to you about Pixie JS, which is what I made my Stackathon game in. Uh, and you'll see why I want to talk to you about this as I go on. So, what is Pixie JS? Pixie JS is a 2D WebGL slash HTML5 render, and WebGL is a JavaScript API 2D slash 3D render. So, yeah, that's what it is. And, oops, it's not a game engine. So, that's the big takeaway that I want to uh, get here for about Pixie.js. Okay, so then what about Phaser.js? Phaser.js is a framework that is a custom build of Pixie.js. So, Phaser.js is designed to make games. What it has that Pixie.js doesn't have is physics, built in sound, state. Um, so, in terms of uh, physics, you don't have to make a contains function or a collision function. Uh, state, you don't have to uh, alter it manually from visible to, uh, from visible from true to false. And uh, also, it gives you the ability to use map editors such as tiles for minimal uh, coding in order to make a bitmap for the background. Uh, and like I said, the collision and input, keyboard inputs are built in. Oh, also, it's built by Photon Storm, who is Richard Davey. And uh, his username is Photon Storm, and the company's name is Photon Storm, which is a little confusing. But uh, yeah, they all make, they, uh, they make all their games using Phaser, obviously, because they, uh, Richard Davey made Phaser. But um, before, before uh, 2008 or 2009, I think, they weren't using Phaser. So. Here is a sample of uh, collision logic in Pixie.js. As you can see, it is really long. So I'll just go through it really quick with, quickly for you. Uh, we're going to define the variables and have a hit variable that's false. And then we're going to find the center point of each sprite. So there's two sprites, R1, R2. Find the center point of each of them. Find the half widths of each of them. Calculate the distance vector between the sprites. Uh, via Vx and Vy, and then figure out the combined half widths and half heights. Check for a collision on the x-axis. If there's a collision on the x-axis, that doesn't mean that there's necessarily a collision, so you have to check the collision on the y-axis. If there's a collision on the y-axis, and hit is true, else hit is false. Yeah, it's a lot. Okay, so what do you, what do you need to build a game in uh, any engine, really, but specifically Phaser. In Phaser, uh, you need sprites, right? So sprite is based off the Latin word spiritus. I looked that up on Wikipedia. It means spirit. Uh, and yeah, sprites in computer graphics are 2D 2D bitmaps that are integrated into a larger scene. Originally, sprites referred to as independent objects are composite together by hardware other elements, such as background. Basically, what this means is that you have a background, and the background is not a sprite, right? Because the background doesn't have physics. It's not being affected. Even if, it's not, even if a sprite's not being affected, uh, it still has either animation or uh, it's based off a, a sprite map. And this is actually where sprites were first created. This is called the Coleco Vision. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. If you thought Dreamcast was hipster, uh, this is, this is I guess, this tops it. Because I, I don't know anyone who's owned one of these. Uh, it's been, it was built in the 1980s uh, between when Nintendo and Atari came out with their systems. And yeah, honestly, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. So yeah. Uh, what else do games need? Animations, right? So here is an animation of a dog wagging its tail, I guess. And what I want you to notice about this animation is that the animation is built of uh, multiple frames. I think about five, right? You can see them uh, being looped, basically, through a certain amount of frames per second. 
So uh, talking about animations, the best way to make, well, in my opinion, the best way to make animations is through a texture atlas. And what is a texture atlas? In real time computer graphics, a texture atlas is a large image containing a collection of atlas sub-images, right, of these uh, sprites uh, for some part of 2D or 3D model. So basically, you'll have the same sprite through different animations. And uh, the texture atlas, let me just show you. So the, the, texture, the texture atlas I'm using right now is called Texture Packer. Uh, it's pretty popular. I think they recommend that for both Pixie and Phaser. Um, and here is an example of how you use Texture Packer. So uh, basically, it gives you a screen. You have your sprites in separate images. And all you do is click and drag onto the screen. And then, as you can see up here, you click Publish Sprite Sheet. And all this other stuff is really not important at all. All you need to know is that uh, when you click Publish Sprite Sheet, it'll give you a JSON format and a PNG of your uh, Sprite Sheet. And then you can refer to your sprites through your JSON. Uh, yeah. And here's the JSON, right? So you have Goomba 1, 2, 3, and 4.png. Uh, and what's important to know is that for uh, this texture packer, you can't just use a, a sprite map itself. You need to, you need to uh, decompress it through Photoshop if it's a whole sprite map or uh, through an online source. Uh, these are basically the individual images that have been decompressed that are able to get you this uh, nice JSON format. If you put in a whole sprite sheet, you'll just get one JSON uh, item or object, and basically it'll give you the whole sprite sheet, which is not good. So now here we have how you make a game, or the initial steps to making a game. So you say var game equals new phaser dot game. 600 by 600 is the x and y axis. So it's 600 pixels by 600 pixels. Phaser dot canvas is the detector, so it's looking for that. Mario Defender is the name of the game. You can call it anything you want, right? And then you have three callback functions, preload, create, and update. I'm going to go through these. Uh, so what, is this, what does this phaser.game make right now? Just a black screen, right? This is, this is what you get if that's all you have. So obviously, you need to put things in your preload, uh, uh, update, and create. <coughs> so preload. Preload are loading the assets so they can be used. Here I have four things I'm going to preload. Uh, Mushroom, Princess Peach, Mario, and a Goomba. And this is what the preload function looks like. So you just game.load.image, and then you call it whatever you want, right? So I have Mario, a mushroom, white for white background, Peach, and Goomba. Notice the Goomba has a PNG and a JSON, right? Because that's what I put in my texture packer. And then I load it through a JSON hash. And what does this give you now? Still nothing. I th you thought this would be easy. It's not. No, I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. Uh, that's because what you, what you, how you make the game is through the create function, right? Um, so in the create function, which is, comes after the preload, you're, you're going to add the images. So here I'm adding whatever. I'm adding the images, Mario, Peach, and Goomba, setting them to a variable. And then I'm setting the scale so that they're a little smaller or bigger than they are. And this, this is what you get, basically, from uh, this. And then you want to add animate the sprites. So uh, also, in your, also in your update, or in your create, sorry, uh, you want to have an animation, and you want to add it, and you have a name for it. So here I called it move. Um, and I have Goomba 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then I have. Five being the frames per second, and true meaning loop again after the loop is hold done. So it'll keep looping. And then you also need, so animations.add is not enough. That just adds it, but it doesn't actually play it. So what you want to do is animation.play move. And now for the other aspect of the game, you need to do, a, you need to do an enable physics for the sprites that you want to enable, right? So if I want to use Mario, if I want to use the Goomba, I need to do game.physics.enable. And then phaser.physics.arcade is the most basic format for uh, enabling these. Um, so I have Goomba, 
And because Goomba, there are multiple Goombas that I'm going to put in the game, it's game.add.group and then enable it to arcade. And also I gave it a health of three, which is, uh, I guess, a little arbitrary for this example. But uh, now that you have all of that and you have the, the sprites that you want with physics, you're going to have an update, right? And the update is basically the logic of your game. So you have, I have here simply just cursor up, cursor down, which means if I press up, it's going to go up at uh, 200, 200Y. 200 if it's down, it's going to go at, down at 200Y. And if I don't press anything, it's zero. And then if I press space, which is my fire button that I set to, it's going to shoot a mushroom. Um, and OK, so now you see the collision here. It's really, really simple compared to what I had earlier in PixieJS. It's just literally overlap, and then the two items that overlap. And, uh, and then I have a handle Goomba, which is killing both of these sprites based on collision. And uh, really quickly, adding sound is in preload. You load the audio. In create, you set an object to audio, and then you add the audio. And in play, you play it wherever you want. So if you want to put in your shoot, uh, you put that in the space function. And here's the credits. Uh, this YouTube video was great. Um, I got a lot of inspiration from that. And the phaser examples are also amazing. They have like 700 or something. And also PhaserJS, they have a blog for lots of cool games. And thank you, that's my presentation. <laughs>